Hello and welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 5, Game Mode Functionality. In this lesson, I'll describe good practices for when game mode class should be used to handle gameplay functionality, and I'll also demonstrate implementing game mode functionality into our project. As I described in the first lesson, the game mode is designed to handle gameplay functions, specifically when the player enters the game and what classes will be used. Game mode can also be used to house the rules of the game, especially in a single player game where you don't really need it for anything else. In a multiplayer game, you can keep a lot of the variables in game state and the game mode can just handle spawning players into the level. The game mode is also responsible for handling when the game is paused and what happens when the player pauses the game. So let's implement some game mode functionality to our project. In the last lesson, we got the player set up so that it can now rotate with the mouse and we can fire cannonballs with the left mouse button. Now we need to start implementing our enemies, the bugs, into the game. Let's start by creating a new class and this is going to be a pawn blueprint class and we'll call this BP bug. Let's open that up and let's start by adding a collider. So we have something for our cannonballs to collide with. For this, I'm going to use a sphere collision and we'll rename it to collider. Next, I want to add a visual representation of my bug. So let's add a static mesh and select sphere. And let's scroll that down until it's approximately the same size as our collider. And let's drag one of these into the level so we get an approximation of how big it is. Yeah, and that's way too small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll start by going to our collider and we can set the sphere radius. And I think I wanted it much larger. So let's start with 100. We'll scroll this up. And we press play. It's still a little small, so I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. Let's make our collider 150, which I guess is one. And I think that's a great size to start our bug. I also want the player to have some indication of which direction the bug is moving. So let's add an arrow. And we'll attach that to the collider. And let's move it out of the sphere so we can see the forward vector of our actor. Now on this static mesh, let's add another sphere and bring it out in front, and this will show the player where the head of the bug is. We can make this one a little bit bigger too. And now that there's gonna be a lot of different things in our level, I wanna start making some materials so things stick out and look a little bit different. So I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this materials. And let's create a new material called M underscore ground. And I'm gonna drag this onto our floor. And I just want this to be a greenish color. So I'm gonna hold the three key, I'm gonna left click, and it'll create that three parameter node for us. And then in here, I could just set the color to like a dark green. And I don't want it to be this shiny, so I'm gonna hold one and left click. I'm gonna plug this into roughness. I'm gonna make it 0.8 roughness. We'll hit apply. And now in our scene, our ground is a nice green color. Let's do the same with our bug and our tower.
so now I've got some materials set up for my actors. And when I press play, I can see that the bug clearly stands out against the green and my tower now has a nice grayish color with a black barrel. So that way everyone knows which direction the cannon is facing. Let's open up our game mode. And what we want to do is we want to set up a function that spawns the bugs randomly on the map. And we want to spawn them randomly at a point at a specified distance in a circle around the tower. And so if we think of a circle being drawn around our tower at a specified distance, and we wanted to find a point along that circle, we could draw a line to that point from the player and then we have an X and a Y coordinate in relation to the player. We can use the sine and cosine to find the coordinates of that point along the circle. Here I am in my game mode class. I'm gonna create a new function and it's gonna be called spawn bug. And in here, I'm going to use spawn actor from class. I'm gonna find my bug. And this is what we were doing before with the cannonballs. But this time we want to find the spawn transform based upon that random location on the circle. Let's right click on the transform and select split pin struct. This will allow us to set the location, rotation, and scale independently of each other. And for rotation and scale, we'll just leave those at zero for rotation and ones for scale. We're really only concerned with the location. And off of this location, let's do a make and we'll make a vector. For their spawn location, we're gonna calculate the X and Y value. And for the Z, we wanna use the height that we want the actor to spawn into. If we go back into our scene and we find our bug and we find a height that it's about sitting on the ground, we can look here and say, that looks like 140. So let's call it 140. And we think I think that's a good height. So I'm gonna go back into my game mode and I'm gonna set the Z to be 140. And now let's calculate the X and Y values. Now, if you remember, we wanted to have a circle and that circle is gonna be a set distance. So let's create a new float variable called bug spawn distance, and this is gonna be a float. And for now, let's just set this to 2000. We can always adjust it later. Let's get that bug spawn distance, and we're gonna to wanna to multiply this by cosine, and we're gonna use degrees. And we can plug this into X. But cosine of what? We need an angle here. And for that, we want to select a random angle from our tower to that circle. So let's right click here and we're going to say random float in range. And our circle has 360 degrees. So we're going to select a random point from zero to 360, which will give us a random angle around that circle. And let's create a variable from this so we can reference it throughout our function. And we can use a local variable for this. Remember, functions can have their own variables that are only available to that function. And we're gonna call this random angle. So now we're finding a random angle from zero to 360 and we're creating a reference to it as a local variable. And then we wanna take this random angle and that's gonna be what we find the cosine of. So if we find the cosine of our random angle and then multiply it by our spawn distance, it's going to give us this value here of X. So let's find Y next. And for that, we're gonna need the sine of this. Let's drag off here and multiply again. And we know we're gonna want bug spawn distance times sine in degrees and we want the sine of our random angle and let's test this 
and let's just drag one off of event begin play. We'll call spawn bug. Just to backtrack a little bit, it looks like when I set this up, this value that I had here of 140 wasn't quite high enough. The bugs were falling right through the floor. So I changed this to 200. And now when we press play, we'll see that our bug has spawned at a random location on that circle. And if we close the game and press play again, you'll notice that it's a slightly different location. And every time we do it, it's gonna be at a different location along that circle. But we don't want just one bug. We wanna keep spawning these bugs into the level until the tower runs out of health. For now, let's get the AI of our bugs working. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about some basic AI functionality, and we're gonna get these bugs moving towards the player.